Hello, I'm Nigel Cooper and welcome to this online HD camcorder buyer's guide. Throughout these guides, I'm trying to give you an overview as to the camcorder's market, the kind of productions they're suitable for, any unique features a camcorders might have, the media it records to, and of course the price. The camera I have here today is Sony's PMW EX1R and it has a street price of just under £5,500 including VAT. The PMW EX1R is Sony's replacement for the famous EX1. What they've done around the back of the camera, they've changed the layout of the switches, making it neater, and they've put these orange backgrounds in there so it's much more easy to read where the switch is. Also, before on the EX1, they had the HDMI and the AV outputs along the bottom here, underneath the handle, but now on the EX1R, they've actually moved them around the back, making them much more easy to get to. The hand grip on the side has also undergone a few modifications in shape to make it much more ergonomically friendly. Like the S1, it still rotates so you can actually put it into any position you want, making it much easier to get a nice angle if you're holding the camera at lower angles. The picture quality produced by the S1R is absolutely incredible. This is thanks to three really good ingredients. Firstly, on the front of the camera, we've got this really good quality half inch Fujinon lens. We've got a 35 megabits variable codec, which is superior to the 25 megabits constant found in HDV. And in the X1R, we've also got three really good quality half inch CMOS sensors. In fact, the EX1R is so good, Discovery Channel HD have actually given this camera a silver status, which means in certain HD productions, footage shot on the EX1R is perfectly acceptable. And in the UK, the BBC have also adopted the EX1R for certain HD productions. So who exactly is Sony's EX1R aimed at? Well, in my opinion, with the half inch lens, the 35 megabits codec and the half inch sensors, and the fact that it's already been used by broadcasters for television applications, I would say the X1R is perfectly suited to independent documentary filmmakers, as well as low budget independent feature filmmakers. But corporate video producers will also like the X1R, especially if they want to produce a better quality program for their corporate clients. Music video producers will also love the X1R because of its broadcast quality. That will lend itself perfectly for music television. In fact, the EX1R could pretty much be used by anybody. If you're currently using a Z5 or a Z1, for example, and you want to up the picture quality to a more broadcast standard, then the EX1R should be high up on your list. Let me now run through some of the unique features that the EX1R has. There's uncompressed linear 16-bit audio. The X1 also has overcrank and undercrank, making slow motion shots achievable. It also has a time lapse feature. The Sony EX1R records to S by S cards, but with the use of an adapter, you can also record onto regular SDHC cards or Sony's own memory sticks. These cards come in 8, 16, and 32 gigabytes at the current time, and on the side of the camera, you've got slots for two cards. A 16 gigabyte card like this one will give you 50 minutes of recording time. So with two cards inserted into the camera, you've got a continuous 100 minutes. If you have two 32 gigabyte cards, that would give you a continuous 200 minutes recording time. The cards are in fact hot swappable. So when slot A fills up, the camera will automatically start recording onto card B. But when card B is full, the camera won't go back and start recording over card A. Your media is protected at all times. Although the lens on the EX1R is built in, it's got some really unique features. It works just like a professional broadcast lens in that it has a servo aperture ring at the back. In the middle here, you've got your zoom controller with end stops. And at the front, you've got a really unique focus ring that can either be used in full autofocus like this, or if you push it back, it will actually go into manual mode complete with end stops. The EX1R has also got a really nice fold-out high-definition LCD screen. This really is incredibly good and it's very easy to view outdoors, even in bright sunlight. But if you don't want to use the LCD screen, it can be folded away, tucked underneath, and you can opt to use a viewfinder at the back of the camera instead. Along the side of the EX1, you've got all the usual controls that you would expect to find on the camera for iris, macro, you've got auto and manual focus controls, you've got this built-in ND filter select switch with two choices, you've got zebra peaking and other auto controls, and you've got your usual gain and white balance zebra peaking controls, as well as various other controls on the camera. On the top of the camera here, you've got various playback controls for when you're in thumbnail mode. 
Around the back of the camera, you'll find various controls for audio, as well as the picture profile and menu control. The ES1 has also got a HDMI output. This is really useful for attaching low budget HDMI monitors. They can then be attached onto the top of the handle here so you can have a really nice large LCD screen for monitoring purposes. Just below the HDMI, we've also got a HD SDI output, which means you can attach a higher quality recording device and come out of this uncompressed in 422 color space and record at 100 megabits. Sony's PMW ES1 has been around for a few years now and I was a big fan of it when it came out. The ES1R improves on it even more in terms of layout and ergonomics. The picture quality produced by the ES1R is absolutely incredible. As I've already mentioned, the Discovery Channel have given this camera a silver status and the BBC in the UK are using them on a regular basis. So if television production, such as independent documentary filmmaking, is what you want to do, then you should take a long hard look at the Sony PMW ES1R. Thank you for watching.